This is the PodCraft Beer Show for Monday, June 7th, 2021. Episode 47 covers four craft beers. First is a clean and crisp Kolsch. Second, a straight-up wild ale. Third, a Saison with nectarine. And fourth is an Imperial Stout with adjuncts. This is a PodCraft Beer Show, where we talk about craft beer from Southern California and beyond. I'm your host, Charlie. We have tech guy, Steve. Hello. And we have a special guest host today. He's been here before. We all know him. We all love him. Uh, Josh is here, and he's going to be hosting for us, too, or helping me host out, because Chris is on a little uh, hiatus uh, back in the homeland. But uh, we're going to go through some beers. Today, we're going to look at uh, Modern Times, Phantom Carriage, and Aslan. Yeah. Our three different breweries with four different beers. So we got two from Modern Times, one from Phantom Carriage, and one from uh, Aslan. So we're going to jump right in and start off with some Modern Times. You're going to have to pour. That's yeah, oh, your duty That's my today. job now, I'm pouring? Yeah. yeah, Chris leaves and then I get to drink more beer. I think that's, <laughs> Chris, you should leave more often. So that's <laughs> all I'm saying about that. All right, this first foamy. one, yeah, a little, a little foamy. That's okay. It's uh, this is one of my uh, favorite. Just came out. Uh, second brew of this beer just came out uh, last week. Oh man, they've made it before. It's uh, Lilliput from Modern Times. Kolsch, Kolsch it's style. So, it's probably one of the best smelling beers I've ever smelled. Whoa, Whoa. yeah, and uh, for to me, it's like the perfect time of the year for something like this to oh, come absolutely. out. Absolutely. Weather's warming up. Beer gets a little colder, crisper. Oh, mm. it, man, that magic. Yeah, I usually don't smell Kolsch's because I just want to drink them so <laughs> fast. But taking the time to actually smell this thing, it's uh, got some little floral in there. Almost a little bit of a sour <sighs> apple hint. I'm not smelling that, but I just smell just freshness. Oh. That's, that's my gig. Yep. Completely fresh. I'm a big fan of Kolsch. I mean, I don't even know why, but it just tastes so good and so rich. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's one kind of a uh, almost a hybrid style beer. It's between a lager and a an ale. It's almost like a, it's an ale, but it's brewed more like a lager. Um, mm. Temps a little bit in that regard. So doggone good. And this is from modern times. Yeah. So they got the cool label. Uh, they're rocking some colors on that one, and. Uh, we're tasting this one up. It's so crisp. Yeah. I yeah. think Josh brought two for me to drink. So <laughs> <laughs> one's never enough on this. I mean we have to we have to just ponder on this for another couple thirty minutes or so. But oh wow. Yeah. So flavor notes on this are light, crisp, clean, lemony, and citrusy. Um, you got definitely get all those notes in there. Um, I was actually gonna go back here, but it's uh oh yeah, I'll take more. No problem. We're not giving any to Steve because he gets ripped, and then we're he's just <laughs> fumbling with l wires and knobs over there. Yeah. Wow, that is a really good beer. Put that one on your list. Yeah. That's a go-getter, man. Gosh. They, they just good. they just released it? Yeah, it just came out last uh, last Wednesday. Re-release, right? Re-release. This, this is the second one. This back. is definitely better than... What did they do different? I don't just probably perfected the process. I'm, I'm, you know, they don't really tell you what they do. They might have changed the grain bill slightly, or the hops, or you know, even mm. the. I mean, even something like, you know, looking at the water profile a little bit differently. Or That'd something be cool like if that. they put it on there. What they actually changed. I mean, that would be nice. But I, I feel like that would be insider. Eh. You know. Yeah. Proprietary information. Not if they don't tell you what they did on the first one. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Then I guess you could reverse engineer it and say, hey, this is what they did. So they must have had this on there or whatever. Yeah. Spalter Select is the hops that they use. Grown, German grown Spalter Select. Mm. Uh, bit The notes of biscuit. Got that a little mm -hmm. bit. A little biscuity. Absolutely Meyer lemon. Biscuity. Mm -hmm. Very subtle Meyer lemon uh, flavor. A little bit of honey. That's in yeah. there. Definitely in there. Pear. That's probably that, that sour apples, apple smell I was getting. Little peri. Mm. It's, it's very... <sighs> This is, to me, this is like, you know, after the, uh, you're going out camping, you go take a day hike or something like that, yeah. and you come back and you put a put away a four-pack of these just sitting by the fire or something. Mow the lawn <laughs> and then yeah. just 
shut it down right there. Sit in the hammock and drink a couple of these. That'd be nice. Yeah. This is, yeah, these these styles are, I you know, when you asked me to come and you know, like beer ideas, I thought, oh, maybe we do a you know, Pilsner Palooza or something like that. <laughs> Not, wouldn't have been a bad deal. It wouldn't have been a bad deal. But this was like, as soon as this was one that I was like, oh, I should bring this one because it's, it's such a good, light, crisp beer and it's, it's a mm. perfect starter. Well, the reason I told you to bring whatever is because we could do anything we want. But yeah. I mean, it's the fact that I know that you would bring something interesting, something decent. And, you know, we're not going to have to go, oh, you know what? This was a, you know, this was a bad <laughs> we're idea. We're not going to let him. <laughs> we're going to have to crack another one of my cans to get into it. <laughs> no, that's that was a great one. That was a super good one. So we're going to go, we're going to go uh, modern times again, or we're going to go up to this one? We're going to go to the Bergman. Okay, yeah, perfect. Bergman. Bergman. We're going to jump on the Phantom Carriage Bergman. This is a, um, oh yeah, definitely going to need the wax cutter on this. Can you read us the description they give us? A little bit. I got to, it's uh, get notes of tart. Um, it's going to be tart and dry. Notes of apple. A uh, little sweetness to it. And definitely going to be sour because we are looking at a, uh, a wild ale. Ooh. Aged in wine barrels. Wow, I wasn't expecting that uh, that smell, but gosh, that's a tart smell. Looks good. I'm not getting much smell out of it. It's got a real a little bit of. When it in comes there. out of the bottle, it's not as as rich. It could be smelling the wax, though. Yeah, that's true. Let me smell the wax and see if it was. No, it's not the wax. It no, it's definitely got. To me, it's definitely got. You know, your traditional hmm. sour. Yeah kind of smell maybe it was that first pop off the top that got me cool looking barrel i mean um cool looking can, bottle can. bottle yep. Ooh, oh ooh, that gives you some wigglies there man Woo! that is tart a lot tarter than i thought it was gonna be <laughs> well we just drink a you know a nice crisp yeah course. well it's gonna i got some uh some watering down there oh that saved get, me that definitely gets the jowls going yeah doesn't it did you get that oh yeah ah. a little shiver jeez it's called the beer shiver. That was wicked. <laughs> That's maybe tequila I do that with, but not, usually not beer, even if it's tart. This is probably one of the more tart ones I've ever had. Yeah, it doesn't, there's no real adjuncts to it. It's just wine, wine barrel aged. I love that wine barrel taste yeah, down there. I do too. Um, pretty straightforward. You know, a lot of times they, they want to fruit the sours. What'd you know, they rate that on Untap? It was at just under a four. Okay. We were looking at a... Uh, Let's see here. Let's yep, pull it just up went here. up to four. Just went up to four. There we oh, go. That's tasty. That's a drinker there, man. Gosh, after that first taste, I don't have the shivers no more. Yeah, we did, they do talk about you know brewers uh, when they when they make a beer and they when you taste in a beer, you know the first first couple of sips you're just kind of getting used to it. It's really that third third uh, sip that you're looking at. That's the one that's their their intended flavors. Well, uh, this, this Phantom Carriage, I don't know if you've ever been there, but uh, Chris and I rolled up there. Um, I think we were going to Monkish, and he said, hey, let's roll through here and see. We might even hit Green Cheek at the time. But uh, we went in there, and it was God, this place was so dark. It was the darkest brewery I've ever been in. I mean, right. it was just, I mean, it's, that's their whole. Uh, their motif. Yeah, is like death, and they've got uh, sci-fi movies on in the back and stuff. So it was kind of cool, actually. The, the gal behind the bar was really nice explaining, you know, what they have available and everything. It was super, super interesting. She was she was super helpful. But we just plucked a bunch of beers out of their fridge there and just drug them home. And uh, this is one of them. And I can't remember what else. We've drank one of the other ones. But uh, this one sounded really good to me. So I popped that out of there and ran home with it. They, have, they, had, they had one that was a cherry sour and it was really cherry sour mm -hmm. too it yeah. was good well though. cherries lend itself to sour it's just like it's like piggy piggybacking on that yeah. tartness from the bacteria. i like it, but yes. uh super neat super fun place to be to check out you know and uh and we, something else i think they had uh uh lord hobo was uh some beer they had available there too you ever heard of that no i haven't i this is i i will say i think you've shared one other phantom carriage uh beer with me before which was uh, the cherry. cherry one yeah yeah um and i remember that being really good and fruity and tart um but this is i mean these are this is a good 
nice. This is great. Cr yeah, this is like I don't have a I don't have a fruit that I'm getting from it. I just think it's a it, it seems like it's just a straight up sour. Yeah, there's no there's not really any like I wouldn't say like there's a fruit there's not a fruit adjunct to it. You get a, a little bit of the um a little bit of I can get a little bit of the tannins from the red red wine barrel, not a ton. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that is lending to the value, and you definitely get some of that oakiness. Yeah, definitely um, from the barrel, but it's not overpowering. It's but unique. It's just, yeah, it's unique. It's really good. Yep, I like it. You know, you order case, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> well, I mean, they probably don't make this. It's probably gone. I, so. I will say this. I'm, I'm very uh, one. Th one comment I will make, and it's uh, the same comment about the next one we're going to have too, is the bar the bottle size. Yeah. There, well, I remember when they first, we were looking at a lot of sour places still, but you know, the seven and a half, seven, five, 750 milliliters, it's just a lot of sour. Right? Yeah. These, these, you know, three, 350, well, 500 milliliters. That's why I brought the Casey, but we declined that yeah. one. So it is a big bottle. Mm. It's a big bottle. Well, you know who it. else does the great size bottles like that is um, California uh, Wild Ales. Mm. All their bottles are that size. I'm like, this is perfect, you yeah. know? It is. It's a, you can drink, you know, it's basically a 12 ounce can, <laughs> but it's in a bottle because you can't can sours really um, too well, but it's, it's nice. It's, it's a nice. You can can them. <laughs> if you want to <laughs> destroy your canning line. And no. I'm never kidding. use it again for anything. Well, they, if you have two different ones and you just do sour on one. And, that's true. Yeah. Well, in the kettle sours are usually canned. Yeah. Well, that's, that's because uh, of the process kills everything and so they don't have to worry about it but. i like it what do you think of that so bottle? most of these sours are done in red wine barrels or does it matter i've seen them in both red and white mm -hmm. i i think uh, more often i do see red wine barrels um i've you know but a lot of times they'll they'll even blend them they'll do some red some whites and blend them together um but uh it's they're i the wine barrel lends itself to the sour it doesn't it doesn't fight the flavors um you know it, the next one we'll talk about is in a different type of barrel we'll get to that in just yeah. a second but i i've always found like you know the the wine barrel most most sours are aged in wine barrels that, right. that's what they use just mm -hmm. because you can't really you know you'll get eventually you i don't know what you would get if you if you age a sour in a like a bourbon barrel Probably something gross. I mean, I'm sure it's been tried and mm -hmm. just for giggles right. and, right. but you know, that would be interesting. I mean, I, if it was the right thing, you know, yeah, and you don't see stout aged in wine right. barrels either. I mean, we a couple yeah, weeks have you, ago. Have you seen any in like a Riesling or Gewurztraminer? Uh, Leap yeah. from Milch. I I can't recall a Riesling. I've seen Riesling saisons where uh -huh. they use right. the riesling grapes in the saisons oh, wow. yeah. and they'll age it in like a fooder or in a mostly in a fooder i've seen it mostly in a fooder um i've seen it occasionally in you know wine barrels and things like that but um but i say that, fodor i think it's a fooder well do you say friedrich or frodrick i don't know it depends on what his name is <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i've uh that, one of my one of my favorite beers. I almost grabbed it. it was one of them was it's a saison mm -hmm. with riesling grapes oh. and aged in a fooder. And so it's you're like, holding out on it. You know, there's always more shows. <laughs> there's always more we shows. We can go to two a week. Yeah. How long, how long is Chris's vacation? That's <laughs> yeah. what I want to. Chris, you better get back, buddy. I'm gonna yeah, fill well, the void. You no, know, he'll be, he may fly back tomorrow because we're drinking beer. <laughs> get in on that. That's great. No, I'm I'm liking that. That yeah. was a good call for me. Yeah. And where are they located at? They're Carson. At, yeah. Carson, California. They're oh. up there in L.A. Somewhere. All right. Not too far away. No. I mean, it's a cool little place. I mean, seriously, mm -hmm. it's dark, but it's cool. Mm -hmm. and, is, that, uh, is that the one that had Crips in it? Is that what I recall? Or, or something? I don't know about kind of, Crips. But, but just like very dark. Dark. Dark, yeah. yeah. Like their motif is like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Death and Death. Halloween. It's constant yeah, Halloween. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. okay. And they, like I said, uh, they, have, they have uh scary movies on it all the time. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Horror movies, whatever. Yeah. Right. B and films. I was, huh? B films. Yeah, they all were very low budget bees. But yeah. uh it was oh. it was interesting, fun. We just 
stopped in there and had a beer or two, and then we grabbed a bunch of beer and then just headed on our way. But uh, super fun, super interesting. Those guys, like I said, everybody there was really nice and friendly, and we were there at opening. I mean, so it was like 10 o'clock in the morning, and, uh, you know, we started early. But if you don't mm -hmm. start early, you can't drink all day, so. For sure. Here we go. Ooh. Wow, super interesting. Here, here you go. Don't go dirty. I'm going dirty because I learned it. No, wow. I just had to drink more Lily Put so I could empty the glass. Oh, oh my God. I'll help Steve. Oh, Steve up. This is going to be a different. Wow, that smells Still really sour. light. This is the, uh, what's the name of it? Celest uh, Celestial City from Modern Times in Gin Barrels. Gin Barrels and with Nectarines. Oh, Nectarines. I didn't so. know that one. Yeah, so this is um, again, it's a, this is a saison style, um, aged in gin barrels, um, so it's a wild saison, which most oh. of the should be. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's better than the last one. Wow. Uh, okay. Last one was good. This I like. This is my my groove right here. I think. What? It, it too. Di same. Vernacular beer, like we're still in that sour yeah. region of beers, but this is definitely a more intentional approach to it. There's a there's a desire to create some different flavor. You're definitely going to get because it's a saison. You're going to get some uh, earthiness, um, some almost like herb uh, flavors on there. I smell that herb, but it's just it's you. It's a it's a different smell. The taste is just lights out good. I mean, lights out good. Yeah. I, in the, you know, we talked about, we did a stout a while ago with gin barrels and it had cleansed your palate. <sighs> it still does it on this. It kind of wrecked mine. It yeah, was, no, I was not happy with no. that gin uh, barrel <laughs> age. And who was that from? It was a collab with um, Horace. Horace and, help me out. Steve. I had to pull out the website. Yeah. Uh, but, anyways, it was, I mean, everything from there on. Southern Grist. Yeah, yeah, Southern Grist, you're right. And everything from there on was good. Yeah. But we we started in the order that we should have because that thing was just not our... Well, even when we had it, we talk, I mean, we were talking about how gin... I've never had a gin stout. I've always... Gin's always been like a light beer or a And I'm sure sour. it's an acquired taste. Yeah. If that, I mean, if you like the raisins and dates and, and that, maybe that's... That's an acquired taste. I mean, I, yeah. it's not mine, that's for sure. This, this is a, really good. Yeah, yeah. this is what I will say about this. This one is, oh. is a, got almost like an effervescence to it. Absolutely. That bubbliness mm -hmm. kind of like opens up the flavor like more it. in your mouth. Um, it's almost like hypercarbonated almost. Yeah. Yes. Because the I, little tiny I'm bubbles. I'm glad I have more than one bottle of this. Little house, tiny so. bubbles. Yeah, that and that nectar. What I love about the nectarine too is it's it's in there. You can taste it, but it doesn't take it's over. It's not overpowering. It's a, it's we a, got we got some great color on the beer too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of beers, what'd you have this week? This week, uh, what was I drinking this week? I ha oh, I went and uh, I had I hadn't had it yet. Uh, the new order of Hermes that came out that was pretty good, and I went back into the back of my fridge and found. A Gravity Hammer, the latest version of Gravity Hammer. Wow. It was probably two or three months ago. Uh, super Berliner, uh, a bunch of fruity. It was all. It was in a slushy, but it was on the verge of being like chewable. You know, wow. like just told packed Spoon. with fruit. Yeah, and uh, and at ten percent, uh, it wow. went down way too quick. It was actually one of those dangerous ones where it's like, oh, I'm drinking this. It tastes so good, and you know, all of a sudden you're just like. All right, I'm going to sit down and do nothing for a little while. Just enjoy. I think you have a backlog of modern times beers available. I, I do, unfortunately. it's. Just, I'm willing to help. I, I know. Well, I am going on a road trip, and I have a Always. couple of cases yeah, stocked up that are going to, yeah, ready to go. Probably some of that uh, Lilliput would be yeah, Lilliput in my bag. Lilliput is definitely in the stash. Okay. Yeah. Um, Let's see what he got. Tried something from Sierra Nevada called Summer Break Session Hazy IPA at yeah. 4.8%. How was it? It was really good. Tasty? Yeah, on the barbecue on Memorial Day. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was just I great. saw your post on great, that. Yeah. Great looking beer. It tasted great, and it's readily available. I haven't had a Sierra Nevada beer. Don't they have something called Hazy something? They have a, they have a new one. 
Oh, little ha hazy little thing? Yeah. Hazy little thing. I've had that, and that was many months ago. I mean, probably when it first came out, and I, it was it was pretty good. I mean, but other than that, I mean, I mean, I used to drink a lot of Sierra Nevada, yeah. but uh, <laughs> to tell a funny story, I drank uh, there. Um, uh, we were at a wedding, and my brother was there, and I said, "I'm gonna." The line to get beer was ridiculous, so I walked out to my car where I had a six pack rolling, and uh, I'm out there sipping a beer, and my brother comes out. And uh, he goes, uh, hey, you got an extra one? I'm like, yeah, I do. Here, pop the top on a bottle, hand it to him. He doesn't even look at it. He just throws it down. <laughs> he spits it out. And he goes, that's not beer. <laughs> it was uh, their Bigfoot, oh. mm. their barley wine yeah, version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like 15, 14% or yeah, something yeah. like that. And it was, it's truly, it is an acquired taste. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, well, how can you drink that? I said, yeah. I don't know, but I'm going to. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you were. Sorry, you had mentioned the bubbly, and I, this is kind of crazy where you, you poured a sour. Yeah. A, you know, it's a Saison sour, but it's still a sour. And I, it still has a, a ring of bubbles yeah. around the edge. Yeah. It's, it's holy and it's. Yeah, it's totally carbonated. Uh, I it's told you it's like good. super carbonated. It was, it's, gosh, the, if you come into it with your nose, man, that, that is just a really good smelling beer, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is, the, the Celestial Cities are one of my favorite ones. I, you know, I've. I have romantic ideas about saisons in general. Um, I love them too. Yeah, I you know <laughs> I I remember the the first time I had one. I think it was the uh, uh, Stone made a saison du, hmm. Dupont. Uh, I'm gonna screw the name up, but it was uh, it was just like it was all of a sudden it was like this different thing uh -huh. he hadn't had, and I think they did. They added herbs to it. It had you know like thyme in it. Hmm. And, and I so remember was, that. Yeah, and it was just like this, like, so, it was something different, you know? It's like yeah. the first, like... And it was a blue and red labeled bottle, wasn't uh, it? Yeah, good luck on that. I yeah, don't remember. I remember the bottle. Yeah. But I just remember it was the, you know, it was it was all like, almost like the uh, Cali Bell, Bell Q, I think is how you pronounced mm -hmm. it, where they took their IPA and brewed it with a, a different a variant of uh, yeast to give it a completely different flavor. That was kind of in that kind of avenue as well but i remember having that beer and like oh my goodness it, you know it was like it was this time of the year you know yeah. spring heading into summer and you have something light crisp and refreshing and you're like oh my goodness it's so different and you're you know your flavors you're you're so used yeah. to drinking like ruination and yeah. you know heavy yeah. ipas and you go to have this thing you're like oh that's kind of nice you yeah know? so it's it, light and fruity yeah i've always had smells a, great and it tastes fantastic yeah so my beer this week was, uh, I had a Bobcat Danger, mm -hmm. oh. and it was great. I mean, that is a killer beer. I mean, it's a Modern Times uh, Berliner. Bottle, uh, bottle, it was Bottle Logic, right? Uh, I can't, I, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. I'm pretty sure it's Bottle the Logic. The light bulb. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was pretty tasty, and um, I picked up some uh, Montucky Cold Snacks today. <laughs> so I'll be tasting those this weekend. My son-in-law is coming in town, mm -hmm. so I'm excited. So. That's a, like your favorite lager, right? Yeah. I mean, it's. A, I don't even think it's. I guess it is a lager, but I mean, it's just so tasty. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's these guys. That's all they do. Right, right. I mean, it's yeah. When you sent me to their webpage, it's like, oh, isn't that there's one beer and a whole bunch of uh, and a whole bunch of uh, swag. Yeah, swag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great. I mean, they do something right and they do it right yeah. all the time. Yeah. So I like it. But yeah, yeah. and I, I'm you know. My travels this summer are going to take me through Montana, so I'll have to bring back some uh, probably them. fresher yeah. to the source. Yeah, well, uh, absolutely. But, I mean, that's what's cool about that. I mean, I haven't ever tasted one that tastes any different than another one. So, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, they're doing exactly the same thing over and over again, yep. which is what Coors and Budweiser did forever, right. but this is a craft. Well, like, yeah. like most German breweries yeah. in, in in Germany, they there's one for your local town. Yeah, and they make and the, the same what? beer. They make the same over. beer. Yeah. They, everybody makes a Helles. Everybody was, makes a Hefeweizen. Everybody makes probably uh, some kind of you know dark variation mm -hmm. of a beer, like a Dunkel yeah, or Dunkel, something like yeah. that. And that's what you that's what you get. Yeah. You well, know? I had a friend that went over to Germany uh, a long time ago, and he's he's passed away, but. Uh, he came home and he told me, he's like, there is a brewery in each town. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, so like El Cajon has its own brewery and then La Mesa yeah, has yeah. its own brewery. 
And yeah, he, my uncle a, won't drink anything else, but that except when he comes man. here and, and he it, thinks he, he drinks Coors Light. Oh, he does. Like, well, there you go. It's just weird. But but I would love to go over there and uh, hit the road. It's a good time. Mm-hmm. I drink it's, some beer. I will tell you, you know, had the pleasure of and the joy of going to Germany, and I was only there. I wasn't there long enough. I'm going back because it just. I, you know, I went to two breweries and I'm just like, I only went to two breweries, you know, it's like, so. He only went to two towns. Too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, part of it was like, I just didn't have a lot of time in each town. Like I, I would much rather, you know, spend some yeah, time, but just slow. the beers that I had there were just, I mean, they're just, they're mm-hmm. fresh. They're different. Mm-hmm. I, they're so, uh, um, constricted on what they can call beer. And I was. Reinheitsgebot. And so, uh, it was, it was, it's, mm-hmm. it's a, if, if you ever just want to go to like the, really to me, like the origins of modern beer making, you know, and, and, and sticking to the roots of what you should be doing. That's, it's a, it's a fun place to go. That's the, you just blended my. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought sour. that was the same thing. Char- Charlie's trying to be nice. And That'll lighten it up though. Steel City and just blended it with. I my, apologize. Uh, you know what? It's not the first time you've or, ever been cooed. No, you know, it might, it might be okay. It'll you know, probably be better. <laughs> but uh, yeah, look at the bubbles on that, man. Those hung around. I was, I'm telling impressive. you that that look at that yep. nectarines in there, man. Because I just got the bottom of the one I finished off, and guess what? I'm going in for a second I, shot. You know, I mentioned the comment about the little bottles and how much I like those. I'm kind of sad it's a little bottle right mm-hmm. now. So should have brought the other one. I don't. Yeah. Maybe I have some, but then I wouldn't have to one to take on vacation big with me. Bottles of <laughs> Celestial City in there. Mm. Do you still have some of those? Big. Did, did you have just, just the straightforward Celestial City? Yeah. Okay. We Which should, is delicious. Yeah, we should pop one of those at some point. I'm did, ready. Any adjuncts, or was it just the straight? I probably had a couple with ads and a couple okay. without. So did it, one mil, like the one point fives or the, the liters? Yeah, the liters. One point five liters or whatever they are. Yeah. Oh, they're. They're big. I think they're missing, Charlie. I just... No. I looked in there the other day, and I saw them. They're 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 smiling. When I leave, I'm just going to go through the garage and double check. Well, (laughs) if you want to take something on your vacation, I got a few things you can take. Get some gin stouts in there. (laughs) (laughs) Quite available for... Uh, Packaged up, ready to go. (laughs) I got them iced down, for crying out loud. All right. On to the third or fourth uh, beer, which is called Dreams from Aslan, which is Mm. in... uh, Arlington, Virginia. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, it's not in Arlington. It's in um, Georgia, right? No, it's in Virginia, but Virginia. I can't remember the name of the little town it was in. Herndon. Mm. And uh, it's Imperial Stout with almond, coconut, coffee, and chocolate. Let me tell you right now, it smells mm. really good. So, so it's called Dreams. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know if you mentioned that, but it's got notes of chocolate, coconut, almond, and coffee, um, which to me is like one of, it's like, that's the blend right there for a stout. Like that's individually, those are all great. Um, together, those are going to be delicious. I love the idea. Um, <laughs> you know, we used to joke about you don't fruit your beer, um, and now we're nutting our beer. Yeah, I, I know it sounded weird to say, but we it's uh, they're actual real nuts. Yeah, I'm not mad about it. Um, I feel bad a little bit for the people that have nut allergies, and um, I'll drink your share if yeah. you are, and you know. Whoa. But uh, I can just look in this thick, dark. It is dark. It looks tell you, delicious. Let, the me, what? let me see the ABV real quick. Oh, man. That's 15. 15%. Yeah. Percent. So careful, boys. You want to um, pass me that lily put that's still in there? Need some wash? Yeah, I need to freshen up the uh, palate. Wow. I can taste a whole bunch of stuff in there. Yeah. Guess what I am? An adjunct junkie. Yes, yeah, we. You knew that, right? We know that. Imperial Stout with almond, coconut, coffee, and chocolate. Well, this is one of those shows where we got three, four styles. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like it. You know, this is a. You know, you're talking about a. You know, a meal. Mm. The coursing it through, like yeah, you got yeah. an appetizer, uh-huh. and then you, you go a little funky. I always. I'm always troubled a little bit. That's why I wanted the palate cleanser with the lily put, but I'm always mm-hmm. troubled by going from sours to stouts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I usually, in a, you know, in tastings, I usually like to have typically the stout before the sour because a lot of times the sour will just 
you know, obliterate your taste buds. Cool can. But, uh, yeah, I, they do some pretty neat stuff sometimes on the cans, at least. Some are very, very plain, mm -hmm. and then others are really wicked cool. So what do you think? I like the flavors. For me, it's a little light on the body. It feels a little thinner. I can agree with that. It's a little thinner than I Usually like it. Light, yeah. yeah. Um, Trying to warm it up a little. Yeah, that might help too. I don't know. What did I... I didn't... Temp here it is. Temperature's right here. It's at the... 57. That's, that's power alley right there. So it's a little thin on the body. For me, I like it a little, a little thicker. Um, 55 on the actual beer. The coconut, kind of, I think, is coming through before everything else. Really? I'm getting at the end. I think you need to drink more. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Apparently, Josh is not up to... <laughs> I can smell the coconut and almonds. Yeah. I don't smell much coffee. The, the I, You get a little bit of the bitter coffee at the end, too. I taste back the, of the bitter time. coffee at the front and the coconut at the yeah. end. Yeah. I'm getting a little chocolate, not a not a ton. I think it's that could have evened it all out. I, I think. think too with like coco coconut can be an overpowering flavor in general, and you have to be really gentle with it. I think when you use it as an adjunct, it could it could take over a beer really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's good. I mean, if and if you, I mean, it's almost like that uh, little graham crackery in there a little bit too. Just a slight, slight late. Now that I'm like tasting it, and letting it kind of just. I can get go. that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue with that. But because I like a little graham. Yeah, cracker. but for me, the coconut is is kind of the a little bit of the show Wouldn't on the this. Coconut almonds and uh, chocolate be like. Well, it's an, an almond, almond joy. joy. Yeah, it's an almond joy. It. I've you know we I've had almond joy beers before. Um, this one, I just it's good. I really, I like it. I mean, I'm not mad about it at all. I just, uh, this, I get more coconut than a lot of other things mm -hmm. on it in terms of the flavor, but, which mm -hmm. isn't a bad thing. It's just. Okay. One of the best, uh, one of the best stouts I've ever had is this, uh, picket fence or picket fences they have. I have another can in there that is from Aslan. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, there's, there's a couple of Horace. Then the Humble Sea, uh, it's called uh, Cashew and Nibs, and then that Picket Fences, and it's those are really good. This is a notch below their Picket Fence, in my opinion, yeah. and it's still good. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. It's just not, I mean that that Picket Fences is it. I mean it lights in, out. And here I'm drinking more of it. It's growing on me a little mm -hmm. more. I, I like it a lot. It's gonna warm up, I think. Yeah. But give it about sixty. But the vis viscosity. No, it's yeah, wet. Yeah, it's just no. the body. Like, it's wet. It's, yeah. yeah, it's not It's not clinging yeah. to the tongue. It's yeah. not... It's not oily. Lingering. Mm -hmm. You know, I. You know, we've we've had some where you, yeah. like, you finish the glass and it looks like there's still a mouthful yeah. hanging on the, Wait till it the edge of the drains glass. Down and this the one, bottom. This one's there, but it's not... It doesn't have that it's viscosity. Not, yeah. And it's not, not a bad thing, you yeah. know. It's just... Yeah. It's, I'm used. I like. I like that part of a heavy mm -hmm. stout. That's it's a. It's one of my favorite parts. Is yeah. where it just lingers. And nothing's really stood on my palate. So it, was, it wasn't. I mean, it's it's a great stout, but it's we've had some tremendous. Tremendous. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. I think that's the hard part. It's like when you get a good stout compared to like some of the stouts we have. You're like, right. Like some people would drink this. And like, oh, that's really good. And we're like, eh, you know, it's, yeah. it's good. <laughs> but man, like we've but we've had we've had. But see this thing. This thing is, is, it's like an even amount of everything, and nothing is really like, wow, that's what I'm getting there, and that's the only thing I'm getting there. Yeah. Like when you drink uh, 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 double dose. Right. Yeah. Or proper dose. Right. Not the double one. You taste those adjuncts, and they're so distinct. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. I, some of the ones that just blew my mind is like Horace. You like you get one when you first taste it, and then you get one in the middle, and then you get one at the end. Yeah, it's like, they're how, do, all how do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's proper. It's proper dosing, knowing how yeah. the, the flavors he, work. He has got it down to a science. Mm -hmm. So I mean, he's just he's just one of those guys that knows what he's doing and does what he's doing super super well. Yeah. And these guys, Aslam makes great beer yeah. all the time. All their beers are really yeah. good. Haven't had a bad one yet. I mean, they've had stuff that has just shocked me that was so good. Mm -hmm. no. But, uh, I mean, the surprise one was that... Um, go ahead. 
No, I just remembered a beer that I had that I forgot I had this week. What was it? It was the uh, Horace Mason collab with Other Half. And I cannot remember. I didn't check in on it untapped because I was at a buddy's house. Mm. I've had it. I don't know where I had it or what it... I, I'm going to research that and remember what get it is. Get back to me. I'll get back to you on that one. We'll circle around. We'll get Circle in back. Us. Yeah. All right. So what's everybody's favorite? Oh, time. <sighs> I'm going to go with that Bergman. I just like. I I'm, thought that was really, really good. I'm going to say Celestial City. I know. I was going to say Celestial City's mine. Um, I. It's been a while since I've been. I've had sours. You know, it's kind of getting into sour season for me. It's so this sour is the, season. I, you know, I like them a little bit in the spring and fall. That's kind of my time. And so I didn't. The Celestial City Gin Barrel was my favorite. I think after that, uh, definitely the Phantom Carriage. Um, just. In, in that order for the sours. Um, at the Lily Put was a great crisp oh, beer. Awesome. I'm going to probably drink about two more of those tonight at least. Um, and uh, enjoyed the dreams. You know, good stouts are good stouts. Yeah. Um, you know, but like I said, you know, it's hard, it's hard for us to rate good stouts when we've had great stouts. So. <laughs> okay. And what was your, you said yours yeah. was the Bergman? Yeah, I'm going to go with that one. Okay. So we both agree that it was Celestial City. Now, I love the stout. And, I, and I'm always a fan of any Kolsch, but uh, because that's just a super unique, tasty beer. But uh, like I said, I'm going to go with the uh, Celestial City with nectarines, which is was mm -hmm. in gin barrels. And that's super cool that the sour tastes amazing in gin barrels and the stout didn't go over that well. But anyways, today we went through um, Lilliput from Modern Times, the Kolsch. Went to Celestial City with nectarines in uh, aged in gin barrels, and we had the Bergman. I'll reverse those two: the Bergman from Phantom Carriage, and then the Dreams from Aslan Stout. Two for Celestial City, one for Bergman, and that was it. Good enough for me, for sure. Cheers! All right, guys, thanks for uh, listening. Uh, we'll see you next time. Until the next beer is poured. Cheers. Well, I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to subscribe to the show via your favorite podcast player app, then head over to thepodcraft.com and look for the subscribe links. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of all the beers, and other good information at thepodcraft.com. The site also has links to send us email feedback and to connect with us on social media. In closing, please continue to recommend the Podcraft Beer Show to your craft beer friends and family members in your life. The more the merrier. Thank you so much for sharing your time and attention with us. For Chris and Charlie, this is Tech Guy Steve signing off for this week's The Podcraft Beer Show. Have a great rest of your day. The Podcraft Show is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020 through 2021. The show is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, then please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for informational, educational, and discussion purposes only. In compliance with fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.